Evening everybody and welcome to Sniper Sundays Volume 7. Um, I can't actually believe we're at number 7 already. Time is flying and yeah, it's been 7 weeks now. 7 weeks of Sniper Sundays um, going very strong. Great weeks, uh, great 7 weeks, good calls every week. Um, lots of you guys making lots and lots of pips. And last week some of you guys uh, showed me some really good sniper entries. So starting to really create some snipers out there. Last The week before we had some good sniper entries to show. But last week was some great ones. So I'm going to go over the two main sort of trades that I took this week um, and that most of you took this week off the back of last week's Sniper Sundays, uh, which was oil, which is in front of me at the moment, and Euro USD. So I'm going to run over these two first and then go over some other pairs. And uh, I'm actually going to cover gold. Gold was a major one that um, was basically asked, requested to be looked at today. So I'm going to look at that in a little bit. Um, later on in the video so let's have a look at US oil so oil here on the weekly chart in front as you can see in front of me it's the weekly chart we can see we had that pullback from here at the highs around $66.50 per barrel and we had that big pull down 600 pips or so and on the weekly we can see with the candlestick has finished this week we sort of had this morning star formation this one two three but this candlestick here last week didn't give us the biggest confidence of a push back up to the upside as We've sort of not ended as a doji but you can see the wick is similar to at the bottom as it is at the top there's no real um, bullish momentum we haven't really managed to fully engulf the, uh, the previous two candlesticks but nevertheless was a good push back up last week now let's just drop down to the daily and I'll just break this chart down again real quick and um, you can see I'm only looking at price action here I've, I've deleted all my levels off for the moment but what we were looking at last week and what we've been looking at for the last couple of weeks was a we had this break of this ascending trend line here um, and originally let me just zoom like right in on the daily what we had here was me explaining about taking shorts from the top here for a long long time and I was looking at coming down to $63 a barrel and once we got to that level um, if we could break this level so you can see the support here on the daily chart so I was on the way back that on the way down from the top here I was watching $63 a barrel to see whether we could break this level. And if we could, then we come down to $60. So I covered this last week. I'm covering old, old ground here a little bit. But I just want to recap for anyone who hasn't seen. So we broke that $63 uh, per barrel um, level and we came down to 60 as anticipated. So overall, a 600 pip move. Then from there, what I explained last week was to watch for a push back up to the $63 per barrel level and to look out for a short trade once we come up to that so what we have here this big spike on the daily was on Monday I believe it was last week straight after Sniper Sundays we had that push back up to $63 a barrel which I highlighted let me just show you so which I highlighted and explained as I said any rejection from that level we failed to break $63 per barrel then I would be looking at taking a short trade um, again coming back down aiming towards the $60 per barrel level um, I also explained that we had this counter trend line, so we needed to break this counter trend line to continue the, the push down lower. So on market open, we actually came down and retested this counter trend line one more time here. As you can see, we had this doji candle on a four hour chart. We actually came down and tested this first and then pushed up to the upside. Now just to show you quickly, I mentioned to you guys that you can follow me on Twitter um, as I'm doing updates on Twitter now. And this is my Twitter page at the moment. And if I just have a look here at what, yeah, so we can see here, this was market open Monday morning. I explained that we needed to break this counter trend line in order to um, have more downside, but to watch for any rejections. And if we do push back up to the upside, to watch for this highlighted zone at $63 a barrel, as you can see here in the text, um, which I've written here. So we pushed up higher. And then I updated on Twitter. Once we did push up high, you can see we had that $63 rejection. And then we had that big push coming back down low. You can see that engulfing candlestick here. If I just take that one away and just see where the next update here. Then we had that big push down from $63 a barrel down to $60.60. Now, once we broke this level, we were attempting to break this counter trend line. You can see here. Uh, great move of US oil today. After predicting the move higher to $63 per barrel, we then saw a sharp sell-off um, as predicted to the low of the day at 60.60. Um, I 
I think I updated on this shortly after is that we needed to yeah if you can see here US oil a clear break and close below 6060 will see us continue to $60 and $59 per barrel now unfortunately we didn't see that straight away we actually saw from hit from that $60 and 60 cents level which I explained we needed to break to have continued that downward momentum we actually popped back up and as of Friday we came back up and retested that uh, let me just get rid of some levels we actually retested that $63 a barrel level again which again has given us another opportunity to possibly take that short trade and, and ride us down to back down to 60 and back down to maybe $59 per barrel so you can see here A, B, C here which we rejected sharply we've come back up and we reject and again short trades from here are good um, just like last week stop losses would be just above this high maybe 20 30 pips um, but yeah I do like down to the, uh, a push another push down to the downside once again but anything above here then we need to get out of that trade as I do think then oil could continue a move up higher and come up even higher and retest and, and take out new highs above $66.50 and push up to sit towards $68 so and um, be careful around this area a lovely area to take a short because if we actually do push up any higher than this now I do think we're going to push up higher so we should get a nice entry around here with a good um, sort of a good margin uh, coming down to about $60 or maybe $59 just as I showed on these Fibonacci I'll just show you here this Fibonacci sort of uh, movement this extension down here is what I'd be aiming at $58.70 to around so around $59 per barrel would be my target if we can reject that $63 level again and push down so obviously we've got this counter trend line on here so just as last week, I'll be watching price to come down here. We can get a nice close below that. We do have this $60 barrel um, support, but we can smash through that. We'll break through, retest, and keep pushing down to go down lower. But any break above this sort of level here, and I will be looking at oil coming up. So I will be changing, probably changing my bias and looking at long trades. But as I said, we had loads and loads of sniper entries around this level. We came up to that $63, just exactly like I said, and loads of you got a sniper entry there. Um, which I've retweeted on uh, Twitter and so on and posted on Instagram and we all uh, every, a lot of people actually took advantage of that 150 200 pip move now euro USD another one so I explained last week about the importance of this is this level here this yellow highlighted level if I just go to the four hour so given that we were uh, we were in a downtrend might just draw this trend line back on for you guys once again I believe it was here so we had broke we were trying to break out of this downtrend that we're in see on a daily 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 and we needed to break above this level here to invalidate the short trend now we came up and we we're retesting it so I explained we on um, the last uh, last week's sniper Sundays this was the last daily candle on the Friday so we had that sort of shooting star so we came up next day, tapped that level exactly what I said that um, we needed to either reject that level, then we could look at taking shorts because if we broke above that level, we'd be looking at taking longs. So we come up, tap that level, created another shooting star on the daily with no wick at the bottom, that Marabuzu sort of candlestick, um, shooting star, lovely, lovely candlestick there to take a short trade. And now we're pushing down once again on Euro USD. So everybody should be in about 100 pips uh, or so profit on that. Now, if I just get rid of this trend line to make it a little bit more clearer, we can see that if I just flip back out to the daily, we have now broken through this level here, 1.1175, which was my second target. Let me actually just go back down to the four. So what I drew on last week was once we once we retest this level 1.1175 to take a short, first target would be coming down to tap this uh, counter trend line here now should we be able to break that then I would be looking we did have this support that I've had on for weeks at 1.1175 to break through and if we can break through that then I would be coming down and looking at euro coming down towards these lows around this level so we're not far off from there now so we're going to see what happens on Monday because it's been a weekend and we'll be reviewing this but insights is 1.1140 and that sort of level there and if that does break, then we can create new lows on Euro USD 
um, new lows for a long, long period of time. So keeping an eye on that. Again, this was the area where we got sniper entries last week. Um, we're about 100 pips in profit on that at the moment. I will be looking at taking profits around these sort of areas. I'm going to see or not all my, not all of my profits, but some of my profits around these areas, and um, on, we'll see how the market opens and what happens with the news over the weekend and, and if that affects the market. But yeah, we'll be look. This is my third target, so we'll be looking at taking some profit from here and seeing whether we can actually have enough force to break down and break through these uh, the previous supports over here to create new new lows or whether we're actually going to find support here and push back up to the upside. So, um, But a great trade on that. And basically looking into next week, I will be looking at any rejections from around this level in order to push back up. Or if we do break through here, I'll be looking at coming down and retesting this as support and coming back down even further and holding on to the, to the short trade that I currently have. So yeah, watch out for this sort of level here. I'll just get this highlight at all. Watch out for around this level here this week and see whether we reject this sort of level. Anywhere sort of within this region, if we reject this sort of level, I will be looking at price pushing back up to the upside and maybe perhaps attempting to push up once more. Um, Euro GBP. Now this was, this thing's been on fire basically. It's taken off like a rocket. Um, two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, not last week, the week before, I looked at taking a long trade from this level. So, again, anyone who hasn't seen the last few Sniper Sundays, between these two blue highlighted regions is a 200 pip range. Now, we've been stuck in this 200 pip range with Euro GBP for, um, for since February this year, and we haven't been able to break out. So, two weeks ago, we were here, we saw this big red bull, uh, bearish ca candle, and it looked like we we're going to break out. But as explained, we really needed some news from either Brexit or something like that to really trigger a bigger move with uh, with the pound in order to break out of this 200 pip range. Now we've had nine days of bullish, act bullish price action. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days of bullish price action and a big decline for the Great British Pound against the Euro um, in the last two weeks. Um, it's been non-stop basically. Now, on uh, the end of last week, there was some Brexit news. Again, with the fundamentals, I'll let yourselves look into that. But there was um, sort of Parliament uh, fallouts and stuff like that in the UK, which uh, basically hindered Brexit. And that's what's given us that push to break out and above 0.8700. So from here, this thing looks like it's not going to slow down. But I think we are in we are um, due for a little bit of a correction from around this level. Now, we could keep pushing up another 30 pips to sort of hit that 0.8800 level here just above um, but we we may well just on market open make a pullback again given there might be some news out over the weekend you can see this fast fast if I just show you there um, steep incline 0 0.1 0 0.2 came back to test it 0 0.3 push up I am expecting to see a pullback towards this if we can break through that I think we'll come back and retest 0 0.8700 and from that level we'll have to reevaluate and see what the fundamentals are around that time and whether we're going to fall back into within this range and this just becomes a bit of a fake fake out or whether we're going to actually sustain above that range now and we come back and retest as a support and push up higher and the pound get even weaker but i uh, i do think that it's time for a little bit of a pullback nine bullish days in a row it's not something that you see um all the time um, and i do think that we might just have one bearish day as a little bit of a correction at the least um, but then from there we'll see. So I am keeping my eyes on Euro GBP sort of around this level here. Between here and that major level, 0 uh, 0 0.8800 and current level. So about 30 pip region, I'll be keeping an eye on this next week. GBP USD. So given what I just said about the pound, you can see there the pound just absolutely died last week. So just to recap over last week, we were up here. Um, we were pulling back if i just go to the four hour this is why it's very important to wait for price action to tell us what's happening so from here i was showing price around this level here and watch it said i'd be watching at any more rejections like what we had here if we had any further rejections that i would be looking at take along because we had this support here 61.8 percent retracement 
and we had the 1.3000 major key level. Now, what I also explained and I highlighted last week was that if that support couldn't hold, which it didn't, so let's watch out for this area here around the trend line. That if we could manage to break this trend line, this daily trend line, that there could be a fast, fast decline for the pound. Um, if we cannot manage to bounce off that trend line, you remember this daily, this daily chart here. I said if we, we're going to come down for a third touch, it is either going to be a reject, rejection from there and a push back up, or if we can break this, then there, there was a, a lot of uh, downside potential um, for GBP. So we can see here we had a bit of a support here, but once we came down to that trend line, sorry, let me just clear this highlighted tool out of the way. Once we came down to this trend line, there was no looking back really. Um, you can see here on the daily, we had that shooting star around that monthly key level. Then we had we tried to break back above and go that big push down with that bearish engulfing. Came down to meet this trend line and we broke through. We didn't even come back for a retest. It just kept dying, dying, dying. Similar to Euro GBP, how um, the, the, the weakness in the pound, there was no pullback, no retracement, and we just literally just died last week. So um, big, big fall for GBP USD. And at the moment, it just looks like it's in free fall. There's no real key level of support other than 1.2500, but I don't think we're going to come down and meet that just yet. You can see we have a little bit of support here, which we've just smash through once again so literally it, this pair cannot catch a bid and it there's no buyers in the market right now it is absolutely dying but there is a lot of supports so not in particular supports but there's a support region around here that we're about to meet you can see here we had a, a big fall down here previously and then we had a big reversal um, it, it happened here as well and um, you see this big fall here and then a revert, quick reversal so I am going to be watching around this level here. That, that I'll be watching it on market open. Just like how on Euro GBP, I'll be watching for around this sort of highlighted level there of about 30 pips or so. On GBP USD, I will be watching around this level for around, 30, around that 30 pip region to see whether we have rejection from that level and whether we can have some sort of a pullback on this massive move down. Whether we're going to pull back and move higher um, in overall or whether it's just a retrace before moving lower I'll update that during the week, but just uh, to begin with, at the start of the week, I'm going to be watching around this area here. Um, USDJPY, a tricky one this week. So USDJPY last week, I did favour a move up to the upside, and I highlighted this level. So I highlighted that level here. So what I was saying is I wanted to break above 110, a break above that uh, this level here, this level here. Want to break above, sorry, break above, retest the support, and then take a take a long um, on a move back up. But what we had was, we, I think we retested that. This was the retest last Friday. Market open, we broke down. Looked like we were going to die with that big bearish four-hour candle. Looked like we were just going to keep falling. But this is why it's quite important to flick in between different time frames. So on the four-hour, you can see that big four-hour bearish engulfing. Um, on the one-hour, um, if you're looking at this. You would have just expected some more, maybe a, more of a fall down to the downside. But if you're flicking through different uh, different time frames, you can see here. This is why it's quite important to have candlestick recognition and to know your candlesticks and your price action off by heart. You can see here one, two, three is a, that morning star formation. Just showed you that there could be that reversal and coming back up. Then the next four hour candlestick, which is which are quite powerful. You see the sort of hammer here, um, or this pin bar. And another push, so the bears are trying to push down, and then we pushed all the way back up. Then we had an, another bullish candle, so we came back in to within that range. So, just a market open on a Monday, we had that fake out down here, and then we pushed back up into the range. And now we are actually attempting to push up and break out of the top of this range at the moment. You can see there on Friday, we had a big spike up to the upside, and just nothing real convincing yet. But I do, I am liking a move up higher on USD JPY next week. So just like last week, if we can manage to break above, retest this as support, which we sort of have done on the one hour here. You can see we've broken through and we're retesting the support and we now may uh, continue uh, continue higher. Um, I do favour longs on this next week. I do still think we're going to come back up to 110.85, uh, this level here. 
And I do think we're going to close this gap in price action. See this gap here um, that we haven't actually managed to actually close yet. So I do think we're going to come back up to that sort of level um, next week or within the next couple of weeks. So yeah, I do favor longs. We've had that fake out of this sort of consolidation zone here. If we can, if we can have a convincing close above this uh, consolidation zone and 110, then I am looking at coming up to 11085. Nice 85 pip move and then higher longer term back up to 112.00. USD CAD, uh, let's have a look at this. This has just been driving people mad really um, over the last couple of weeks. So initially, I think a couple of weeks ago, we had this trend 9.1.2, we broke through. I said that this was the sell area. We came back up, retested 1.3500, had a nice short down. Um, and then basically the same thing happened um, again and again. So we, we broke this trend line, had that nice short down, and we moved back up again. Then we come back down, retested this, uh, this trend line support, tried to push down, went back up again. So we're now sort of created this triangle formation here. So you can see quite simply, we've got uh, this level here, 1.3500. And we've got this trend line here, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So we've created this sort of triangle formation at the moment. That's you can see on our chart. And price is getting compressed into this area, sort of this nose of this triangle. Price is getting compressed. And I'm going to actually stand aside on this now until we have a breakout. Because we may come down and test this counter trend line and come back up and test the top of this range and to the bottom again up and the top and cut, sort of just make a zigzag motion and consolidate in this zone but once we break out of this level then there'll be loads of pips to catch because there'll be a big impulsive breakout and more than likely we'll see a big move either to continue this move upwards back uh, towards 1.3500 or whether we break down and come down to 1.32500 um, or 50 sorry so um, my advice on this one would be actually just to stand aside if you're in it already then hold on to your trade and um, like if you took a short trade from here but anytime you get to this sort of counter trend line, take some profit and move your stop loss to break even so that you're always risk free. Because in this sort of situation, anything can go. Um, and yeah, so it's nothing really too obvious which way this pair is going to go next week. I would just sit and wait for a break of this counter trend line to take shorts or a break of this um, resistance level here, the yellow highlighted resistance level, a break of this level to confirm long trades. So that's my setup on that. AUD USD, uh, big, big, big fall with this pair last week. So, um, just like I was just saying here on USD, USD CAD, um, just about this sort of triangle formation, um, which is sort of a consolidation zone. And you just wait because once there is a break of this consolidation zone, you can even say that there, we're in this little range here as well with USD CAD. Um, once we break out of this range, then there will be a lot of pips to be able to, that we'll be able to catch. So there's no point jumping in this trade when it can just move sideways for days or for weeks. Who knows? But once we have a breakout, either to the upside or to the downside, then we can take full advantage. The reason I'm talking about this here is because of uh, the Aussie dollar. Now, the last two weeks, if you watch, I've had this yellow highlighted zone, um, a sort of 50 pip highlighted zone, on Aussie dollar for the last two or three weeks, uh, two weeks I think it was. So we had broken down, let me just make this a little bit smaller. Originally this was our range. Let me just adjust my screen, sorry. So originally this was my range a few weeks ago and price action was at this sort of level here. We came back up, tested the top of the range, came down, tested the bottom, Push back up, tested the top, and then we came down, down again. Um, I adjusted this slightly on the last night for Sundays to, as we were making this double bottom. We had another push up to the upside, but then inevitably we had a big drop down. So when I talk about seeing a nice breakout of a consolidation zone and something and good confirmation, this is what I'm talking about here. See on the four, we're on the four hour chart. See this big four hour bearish engulfing, big strong candlestick. No messing about really, no uh, like wick on the end showing that there's a bit of indecision. Big push down on a four hour, big breakthrough. And ideally then what you want is a retest, which we've tried to do here um, to take a short opportunity. But um, we didn't quite make the retest because the, bear, the bears were just too strong. 
and pushed this all the way down. So we just kept dropping, dropping and dropping last week. Again, not much of a look back um, for the bulls. And we've just dropped down. We've broken out of this consolidation zone, which we were stuck in. And if you took advantage of taking a short once you broke out of that consolidation zone, now you'd be you'd be very profitable. You'd be up at 100 or odd pips or so. So I'm going to get rid of this now. We are meeting an important level of 0.6875. But as, as I said, with this sort of price action, you wouldn't really want to uh, bet on, on taking a long trade on this at the moment. We are in a little bit of a free fall. But however, um, something I noticed it, uh, uh, over, the week, over the weekend as I was looking at the fundamentals is there was actually um, elections in Australia over the weekend. So that was actually on Saturday. They do expect the, your, uh, the Aussie dollar to get stronger. So we may see a push down lower. But obviously the reaction in the market could be anything once we open up on Sunday evening or Monday night. But I'm going to wait for the dust to settle on this pair because um, yeah, it does look like we're going to push down lower at the moment. But given that there's huge, huge, huge fundamentals and one of the biggest fundamentals that there could be um, in any country with the Aussie dollar, on market open, there could be uh, a, a big difference in price. There could be a gap, it could be a gap higher, it could be a gap lower. Um, something I covered last week. So I'm going to be watching that uh, as we go, as we come into the, the market open. But obviously we've had a big fall. Um, we've come into this sort of uh, weekly support region of 0.6875. So I am possibly looking at a slowdown in price action around this area. We might pull back up. Um, but it's really hard to call this one at the moment until we let the dust settle on Monday and see what uh, is the result of the news. Very similar situation with NZD USD. I had the consolidation zone highlighted here. We had that spike out lower last week. I was hoping to see maybe some bullish action so we could come back up and test the top of this range. But like um, Aussie dollar, we eventually just had that breakout lower. See this daily candle here, really nice break lower. I just dropped down to the four hour. This solid four hour close came back up, retested it here, and then we just sort of uh, slowly trickled our way down and made some uh, new lows, weekly lows here. So at the moment, it's hard to really analyze this pair. We're in midair basically. We've just broken this support. So you can see here, this support level here, we've just broken this support, sort of came back as a retest, and now we're just heading down lower. So it does look like we're coming down to sort of test within these sort of regions, 0.6440 um, to 0.6450. But again, I'm going to wait to see because um, the Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar uh, can move quite similar. So I'm going to wait and see what happens on market open and see where, where we go from here. Are we going to gap down? Can we push down lower and tap, fulfill this sort of target region here before pushing back up? Or are we going to pull back from here and perhaps maybe this form of support here might uh, make some sort of a difference to price action. So I'm going to keep an eye on this on market open. No real preference on this at the moment. But yeah, um, keep an eye on that. Just be aware that there is quite a bit of news and that can affect this uh, on market open. Now something that people have actually asked me quite a bit about is gold. Um, how I got an entry on gold this week. So let's just have a look here. Let's put the daily trend line. I like to keep my charts clear for you guys because it just makes it so much clearer to understand. Um, there is a bit more, a lot more to it at times, but um, for Sniper Sundays, I just like to clear it off because price action is uh, quite essential. Now, a lot of people are looking at buys here on gold. We had we had this really nice breakout of this daily trend line. Nice but strong candle here. But you can see we had this sort of daily uh, doji candle showing that price action was slowing down. Then we had another daily candlestick. So this is why I often say that the most important time of the day to analyze uh, is at night time. So in the UK, the uh, market closes at 10 o'clock and rolls over to the next day. That's when I like to do my analysis because you can analyze the daily candlestick and you can sort of get an idea of what's going to happen for the day ahead. Um, so that's the most important time. So here we can see if you were paying attention to the daily candlesticks here, we got a big push up, impulsive move up higher, but then we had a doji candle, another doji candle, showing that price was slowing down and indecision in the market. Then we dropped down to the four hour, 
you can quite clear, clearly see here massive spike up to the upside and uh, push back down four hour shooting star came back down came back up to try and push back up but the bulls were too uh, the bears are too strong so we tried to push back up we had uh, another four hour doji candlestick here and a four hour bearish engulfing here off that candlestick off the 61.8 percent retracement level and then we started to push down and we came down and we fulfilled these two fibs one two so that's one one thing i was looking at there is a lot more things to my trading i give a lot out for free here on sniper sundays but as you guys know there is uh, the bd forex community opening on wednesday and that's where on things like like this gold that a lot of people are asking me about i go into more detail because i'll actually be explaining the trades um before i take them uh, I'll, I'll be explaining why i'm looking at a trade why it's interesting me and why I'm taking entry and given the entry areas that I'm looking at, like on the, like on this pair, um, so you guys can get entries, you guys can learn what, uh, how I analyze the market, how I look at the market, and yeah, then we saw here on gold we had that big push down, I pushed all the way down, um, big big push down on Friday, and looking very very bearish at the moment, but we're coming back down into support these sort of uh, support areas around here. So I will be watching to see if gold dips down into these sort of levels here on market open and where we can go. Um, if, we, if we can't manage to break lower than these, we could be looking at taking long trades back up higher. Um, but if we break lower than this, then there is a good uh, chance on a big, a bigger fall on a bigger scale for gold to come down. If you see if we break this sort of support level here that I'm highlighting, there is a, a big sort of uh, fast area to fall until we get down to sort of these levels here um, I don't think we're going to make that fall just yet um, so I will be watching on market open even though we're looking very bearish I will be looking at possibly price reversing from sort of these levels here and then making a push back up higher and maybe making a second attack on this sort of trend line here um, that's sort of really it for this week I am going to be analyzing more for the BD Forex community so guys, um, anyone who hasn't on the website at the moment, the landing page, we I put up a video, and um, which is actually given a preview as into some of the things that's going to be coming for BD for the BD Forex community. So we're opening on Wednesday, um, this coming Wednesday. So a lot of you are interested and, and want to sign up straight away. So it's going to be available on Wednesday evening. I'm going to send out an email with more details. There's also going to be something I want to do for you guys tomorrow evening, so be uh, keep a lookout on my um, Instagram page. And yeah, basically take a look at this video and just see some of the things that will be included. Um, other things that's going to be included sort of is I'm going to I'm going to want to trade with you guys all the time. I want to explain trades to you. I want you to understand why I'm taking trades, um, why I'm holding on to trades, and basically everything that I've been showing over the last couple of years on my Instagram. I want to introduced to everybody so everybody can sort of trade like me get those sniper entries get good risk reward um, and basically just start making money um, I said I want to trade along with you so every morning what I want I'm going to be doing is giving you a market break that breakdown focusing on the latest technical fundamental analysis giving you an insight every day into my top, top trade selections um, there'll be updates throughout the day and just like I explained earlier um, an evening call um, basically every day at 10 o'clock there'll also be an evening video which basically reviews what's happening in the market that day and um, yeah basically reviews what's happening in the market that day and gets us prepared for the next day there'll also be a lot more of a lot more stuff for the community members which is going to be live webinars live trading where we actually join and you can see me taking live trades and just lots of stuff for for the community so everybody can sort of we can create a community of lots of us um, taking trades and getting to know each other as well. So it's something that I'm really, really looking forward to um, kicking off on Wednesday. So um, I will see you. Uh, I'll speak to some a lot of you on Wednesday. I said keep an eye out tomorrow. I am going to do a little something on Instagram regarding BD Forex. So keep an eye out for that. I hope you have a great week trading, and I'll speak to um, you guys soon. Thank you.